Okay, let's talk about the acuplacer, and there's different acuplacer exams. The one we're going to be talking about in this video is the Next Generation QAS. And, of course, this uh, is a math placement test. Uh, so if you're watching this video, I assume you've been told by your college that you're going to be taking the acuplacer, and this is going to determine your placement into college math. So this is a very, very important uh, test for those of you uh, out there that are going to be going to college um, or you need to determine, uh, maybe you're in college and you got to take a math course, but you got to determine where you're going to place. Now, uh, just a couple of quick things about the acuplacer. There are three different acuplacer exams. There's an arithmetic or arithmetic level acuplacer. There is the QAS, and uh, this is the most basic level acuplacer. The QAS is kind of like the mid-range one, and then there's one called advanced algebra functions. So uh, you want to... Um, and try to find out from your college which acuplacer you're going to be taking. But we're going to be talking about a uh, uh, practice problem that you could very likely see on the acuplacer QAS. And uh, you should be able to handle this problem pretty nicely if you're fully ready for this acuplacer. Now, it's extremely important that you... Um, you know, do the best you possibly can on these acuplacer exams because math placement is critical, okay, because it's going to really uh, help you save on two tremendously important uh, resources in all of our lives, and that is money and time. You don't want to place into a math course that you don't need to be into. Like, okay, like I already knew this stuff, and now you got to spend a whole semester uh, or year in a course that you really is kind of underneath your particular potential, and then you're going to have to pay for all that you know, uh, credit and, and uh, college um, uh, courses. College is expensive, obviously, these days. So you want to place into the highest level possible so it pays to study for the acuplacer. Now, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, but I have a fantastic uh, learning uh, math learning system that I've had for uh, many, many years. And I actually have an acuplacer next generation QAS math test prep course. So uh, this is something you definitely want to check out. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. Okay, but you need um, a really strong uh, kind of study plan in order to be successful on the, on the acuplacer because this QAS, this is quantitative reasoning, um, algebra, and statistics. This is a lot of mathematics. So in my course, I cover, you know, uh, you know all the math that you're pretty much going to uh, need um, to be successful on this acuplacer exam. So let's go ahead and take a look at this um, basic practice problem. And uh, hopefully um, those of you out there right now watching this video can answer this within literally, you know, a minute or two. OK, don't, you know, don't feel compelled. Don't go on Google and look up different answers or whatnot. Just take a look at this question. And here it is. Let me go and read it to you. So we want to find the mean, median and mode. And here I have a data set. OK, I have some uh, numbers here. So I want you to find the mean, median and mode. And don't look this up. Just, you know, see what you remember. And this is actually a pretty easy problem. But uh, again, if you don't get this uh, uh, right, don't panic. It just uses it as feedback. But if you get this right, well, that's a good indication that you're on the right track. But again, you know, there's a lot more math than this. But uh, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and go over the solution. If you want a little bit more time, go to pause the video if you don't want to see the solution just quite yet. But we're going to start now. All right, so let's get into the mean. So what is the mean uh, of... Um, when we're looking at a set of data like this, well, the mean is effectively the average, okay? So a lot of people get that confused with the median. No, the mean is the average, okay? So how do you find the average? Well, we simply just add up these numbers, okay, and then divide by the number of numbers here. So let's add these up. So 9 plus 1, that is 10. 3 and 2, that's for 5. Here I have a 5, and then here I have a 1. So I'm just adding this up. So 10 and uh, 5 and 5 is 10. So this is 20, 21. Okay, so we have 21 because if we have a 0 here. That's obviously not going to uh, add to our sum. But uh, just double checking here. This is 10. This is uh, 10 right here. And this is 1. So we have 21. Now, how many numbers do we have? Let me go and erase all this. Uh, we go, or it looks like we have seven, but it's always good to double check. And you don't want to be guessing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have 21 divided by seven. This is how we find the mean or the average. And of course, that is three. 
All right, so let's put that over here. The mean is equal to three. And if you got that right, that's excellent. All right, now let's move on to the median. Okay, now what is the median? Well, if you look at that word, the median, it kind of sounds like a middle, right? It's like related to the word middle, or that might be the root word, median and middle. And that's exactly the way you want to think of it. So this is the middle number. But the only way we can determine the middle number is we have to first uh, um, order our data set from uh, lowest to highest. Okay, so we want to rewrite these numbers from lowest to highest. And what is our lowest number here? Well, it's going to be zero. Okay, so zero is a number two. Let's put that there. Uh, so we have zero, then we have a one, and we have another one. So we have to represent all the uh, values here. Okay, so if I have one, I, you can't be like, oh, I already have a one. I don't have to write this other one again. No, you have to write all the ones. So we have one, one, then I have a two, then I have three. Again, I'm going from lowest to highest. Then I have five, and then lastly, I have nine. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so what is the middle number here? Well, if you look, we have three numbers here and three numbers there. So two is the middle number, okay? Because I have three numbers less than two. I have three numbers greater than two. So two is the median, okay? The median here is two. Okay, now... A uh, quick thing about uh, the uh, median here. So what if I had just, uh, what if I had eight numbers, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm sorry, six numbers, uh, or any even number. So if I'm like, okay, what is the, uh, the median? Well, here's three, and here's three. There's no number in the middle. So how do I address that? Well, what you do in that uh, case is you take the average of the two uh, middle numbers. Okay, so here one and two, I would take the average of those two numbers and that would be the median uh, in those cases. Okay, but if you have odd amount of numbers, you're going to have that middle number. But again, you're gonna have to order from lowest to highest. All right, so let's go ahead and answer this last question. What is the mode? Now the mode, um, there's no guarantee that you're gonna have a mode. You're always gonna have a mean, you're always gonna have a median, but um, when it comes to the mode, you may or may not have it. So what is the mode here? Well, the mode is the number that shows up the most, okay, most frequently in your data set. So in this case, it's one. Okay, so one is the mode. And that is it. So if you uh, understand that, again, if I just had, let's say, these numbers, 0, 1, 2, th uh, 3, and 5, well, no number shows up the most. Uh, they're all just, you know, uh, show up one time. So there would be no mode. But this is the mean, median, and mode for this basic uh, data set. And if you got this right, that's excellent. Let me go ahead and give you a happy face. And an A plus, 100%, very, very good. But this is a um, pretty easy problem with, with respect to uh, the, some of the things that you're going to see on the AccuPlacer, but it's a good little, you know, starting point just to kind of see what you know. Now, if you don't know this, and care if you forgot this, don't panic. You know, you just got to go back and start learning again. But um, anyways, this right here, quantitative reasoning, statistics, what we're really doing here is what we call the measure of central tendency. Okay, we're trying to uh, determine. We have this data set here. We're trying to make sense of it. We're trying to measure its central tendency. Like, hey, what's you know, what's the tendency of this data? What what does it mean? Well, again, the mean, the the mean, median, and mode are various ways that we uh, look at data and we try to kind of make sense of it. So this is all part of a broader topic called the measures of central tendency. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap this uh, video up. Again, this is just a quick uh, practice problem. Uh, for um, some of the material that you certainly may encounter on the AccuPlacer QAS. And again, there's a lot of material here. You've got to plan. And the worst thing you could do is to be like, oh, I did great in math. Uh, you know, that was a, a couple years ago, but, you know, I got A's in algebra and algebra two and in geometry, I did really, really good. Well, even if you did great, that's excellent. However, you probably forgot this stuff. You're going to have to go back and review. Okay. And the only way uh, to do that is you're going to have to give yourself enough time to cover enough, uh, you know, uh, topics so you can go into this AccuPlacer exam and do very, very well, right? Again, it's very, uh, tremendously important that you um, maximize your uh, 
potential so you can uh, land into the highest uh, class because we don't want to waste money and time. All right, so again, I'm going to leave a link to my AccuPlacer Next Generation QoS Math uh, Test Prep course in the description of this video. By the way, if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing as well. I've been on YouTube for a long time. I have a lot of videos already on my channel that can help you out. But if you really want my best uh, help with the AccuPlacer QoS, you got to check out my course. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the AccuPlacer. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.